How's it going guys? Man, am I happy right now. Here is my brand new Kawasaki Ninja 636, ZX6R 636. Um, I've had it about two weeks now and uh, still getting used to it. Uh, I can't actually legally ride it on the road yet uh, for about another three weeks until I go unrestricted with my license. Um, I didn't plan on buying it this early, but uh, I managed to catch the mid-year sales. They were ending and I saved myself quite a bit of money on the on the new purchase so I thought it was oh, worth why it. Why did I choose the uh, the 636? Um, I chose it because I like the uh, the electronic package on it, the traction control and the power modes. Um, I think that's a great idea uh, especially in, in wet riding and that um, and for someone who's making the jump from a uh, learner bike to a super sport I think the power modes uh, and the traction control is, is great. It's good to have. Why not? Um, I didn't get the ABS version. I, I did want it, but um, they were sold out and I didn't see it as a huge necessity anyway, so I just got the non-ABS version. Uh, a couple of things I've done to the bike so far. Um, I just put some sliders on. I put the OES sliders on. Um, they came in a kit. It was the sliders each side, the front sliders and the pickup knobs all came in the one kit. So I got those for about $150 uh, delivered. I think that's quite a good price. Um, certainly going to save you in a, in a low speed crash anyway. So I think I think that's worth it. And it just screws in there. Um, no modifying of the of the guards, the fairings. So that's quite good. Uh, what else? I, I, I did go. With, I wanted to keep a Kawasaki. Um, I really like the Ninja 300. Um, the only downside to doing what I've done and um, and buy the bike early is that I wasn't able to go out and test ride uh, the Honda, the R6, you know, the GSXR. That was the only downside to doing what I did. But in my opinion, on paper, just looking at the features um, and, and whatnot, the, you know, the 636 is the bike to get if you're looking for a 600. So that was just my opinion. I, I like Kawasaki. Um, I like their style, I like the colours, I like the way they look, and I loved the 300. So for me, it was quite an easy decision. But if you're if you're someone who's complacent, you know, you, or you're not really, you just like all brands, um, then yeah, certainly do your shopping, shop around. Um, the 636 for me was was just the bike to get. I just loved it. I loved it ever since I first saw it a year ago. So when I first started getting into bikes. Um, did I need to upgrade from the 300? I feel I did, yes. Um, I've been having a few sort of near misses lately. Um, we do push the bikes quite hard, and the 300 is a great bike, but it's still a learner bike. It, it's not without its limitations. Um, the standard rubber on the bike isn't real good, and yeah, you can put better tires on it um, and go from there, but put it this way ever, ever since the first sort of two three weeks I own own the 300 I was wanting something quicker so it's still a great bike it's plenty of fun but it is a learner bike and you know it, it does that job brilliantly uh, but I feel now it's time to upgrade um, you know I'm not gonna blame the Ninja 300 on some of my near misses and things like that it's it's more you know I'd say it's probably 90% rider ability and 10% was the bike just saying I've had enough or I'm not capable or whatever you know it's it's more than likely just me but I still feel like I'm, I'm ready for an upgrade future plans on the bike uh, not too much really I've got a, um, a slip-on exhaust coming uh, which I'm gonna be fitting in a few weeks time uh, I'll, I'll, I won't mention which one I've got I've been looking at the Acro uh, I've been looking at the, the Yoshi, um, the two bros, and the M4. So I'll have a video up in a few weeks when I'm putting that on. So that should be good, just to make it sound a little better. Um, kind of thing like at 100 k's an hour, or even 80 k's an hour, you can't really hear the bike. Like when you're cruising, it's the wind is sort of just, you know, you can't really hear the motor. And I know you can hear it when you're up it, but. I kind of want a bike that can be heard, you know, just uh, when I'm on the freeway, what, I just want a few cars around me to know that I'm there. I think it's a, it's definitely a good safety feature to have anyway, just just for, just for them to know you're there is, is a good thing. You've got your power modes, full power, low power, 
Uh, and you, you got your traction control three is for wet riding, I guess. Off, and then your one and your two are uh, more aggressive sort of riding. I haven't really needed to put it into full power yet. Um, it's my understanding. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think full power only uh, comes into effect, or, or should I say, low power only limits your power in above like um, 9,000, 10,000 RPM sort of thing. And it's still on a run-in, obviously, so I'm not, I'm not really hitting that too much. So I haven't really needed to change to full power yet. I'll probably wait until you know the run-in's done and I can give it a hiding and then I'll, I'll see what full power is all about. But uh, yeah, just want to say a huge thank you as well. Uh, over three and a half thousand subs now, guys. So it's all you that uh, watching the video, commenting, liking, um, sharing it on Facebook and that, that, that really helps. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. And um, it motivates me to keep making videos. So I hope you enjoy them and uh, ride safe, guys. Stay tuned. Just one thing I want to show you before I end this video just rode over here so listen to this I love it I love it ah <laughs> oh, it's so good it's a totally different bike to the 300 I mean this is this is what a motorbike should be I can't wait to get out there see you guys